It has almost been six years since I covered anything related to MAME on this channel, and so I thought now might as well be as good a time as any to do an overview, installation, and setup of this incredible emulator. If you're now just learning about MAME, MAME is short for Multiple Arcade Machine Emulation. MAME initially started out as an emulator that supported arcade machine hardware. If you don't know what arcades are, then check this out. Imagine just showing up to a place with all these games just lined up against each other. Unfortunately, these magical places are in short supply nowadays, but with MAME we at least get to enjoy what was and so much more. Since my last MAME video, there have been several new working machines, game fixes, and improved performance for certain hardware. Support for 3D accelerated games has, in my opinion, had the biggest breakthroughs in the present landscape of MAME's development. Games that just use Sega Model 1, Capcom ZN1, Namco System 11, 12, 22, and recently 23 are all in the playable state. While these are the more known systems, Midway, Atari, Taito, and Konami also have some 3D arcade games, which are also very much available and playable as well. MAME has gone beyond just being an arcade emulator supporting consoles, PCs, and handheld devices. While it is certainly amazing that MAME can emulate so many different forms of gaming hardware, it doesn't quite support everything at 100% accuracy, and there are other emulators out there that do. MAME also doesn't have certain enhancements like other emulators as their main goal is to preserve the game as it was originally intended. I will be leaving a link in the comment section that recommends other emulators for certain hardware. MAME used to be a command line interface, but it now has a graphical user interface and you can run it like any regular application. It is an open source emulator and this has produced many forks of MAME that you may want to consider. Some of the more notable forks of MAME are MAME UI 64, which uses a Windows style GUI that is similar to other emulators, Groovy MAME, which was specifically designed to be used with CRTs, MAME++, which uses Netplay, Wolf MAME, which is used for high score rankings, and MAME for Droid, which as you may have guessed, is developed for Android operating systems. Now there are a few things that set MAME apart from other emulators. One of the biggest things that makes MAME different is the way that it does updates. You see, while MAME has updates, games can have updates of their own. These updates are delivered separately from MAME and it is recommended that you update these games using an application called CLR MAME Pro. I've done a guide to this application in the past and while there are a few things that are slightly outdated, it still pretty much functions the same way. Keeping your games up to date with each version of MAME is something you really have to stay on top of. You're going to want to make sure that you did not miss a game update from that previous version. Some forks of MAME use different versions or take a while to update to the latest version, so you always want to make sure you know what version of MAME is currently being supported before you grab or update any games. While arcade games are known as ROMs, consoles, PC, and certain handheld games are known as software lists and require a different type of setup. I've created a separate video for software lists which will release alongside this one. When it comes to MAME ROMs, there are three different types, split, merged, and non-merged. For a long time, split was what many of us used. When it comes to arcade games, you can have multiple versions of the same game known as clones, but in this case, there is one game in particular from which the other versions derive, and it's known as the parent ROM. Without the parent ROM being present, the other ROMs will not work. Merge takes all the different clones of the same games and puts them all under one file. This helps save space and I would think some confusion. If you're like me then you like to use front end applications and while some do support merged ROMs, others may not. This is where non-merged ROMs can be of assistance. Non-merged basically makes all the clones of a specific game playable without the need of the parent ROM, but can take up more space as a result. Like other emulators, certain hardware requires a BIOS in order to run so you definitely want to make sure you check the requirements of certain games. I provided a link to a MAME database that will give you details on arcade ROM requirements. Lastly, certain games may have additional sound samples that have to be acquired separately from the game ROMs. I believe I've covered everything I can think about when it comes to MAME, so let's take a more in-depth look. I provided a link to download MAME in the comment section. I'll be installing the original MAME application which as of this writing is currently on version 0.272.
Once you've downloaded the file, head to your download location and open the installer. You may get a Microsoft Defender window. Select more info and choose run anyway. Next, you want to choose a location to install the emulator. Clicking on the dots next to the right of the file location box will open File Explorer. Once you have selected your folder location, select OK. It is recommended that you create a folder for MAME if you have other files located in your selected folder. I find it easier to just add it in the file location box by entering backslash and MAME, which will automatically create the folder for you. Select Extract. Once the installation is complete, head to the installed location and we'll take a look at a few files. The first thing I want to point out is the ROM folder. This is where you can add your game ROMs, though there is an option to add game ROMs from another location, which I'll be showing you in just a few. Adding games to this folder is recommended if you plan to move the emulator to another PC in the future. The next folder I want to highlight is the samples folder. As I mentioned before, if you have a game that has a sound sample, you want to add it here. The final folder I want to point out is the hash folder. This contains information for each hardware device that MAME supports. If you ever need to use CLR Pro MAME to scan software lists, it is recommended that you use the files from this folder to create a profile for each system. Now let's jump into the emulator by selecting the MAME.exe file. The first thing I'm going to do is locate my games folder. Select General Settings, click on Configure Folders. Select ROMs, select Add Folders. Locate your Game ROMs folder. Once you have confirmed you have the correct file location in the green box, press the Tab key to add the location. I'm going to add one more location. After you completed adding your ROMs folder, select Return to Previous Menu. This will take you back to the Configure Folders menu. Scroll down and select Return to Previous Menu. Select Save Settings and then Return to Previous Menu. This should bring you back to the main screen. To confirm your games have been detected, you want to select Available located on the left panel. If the games were detected, they will show in the middle panel. When you select a game or a system, a panel will appear at the bottom confirming its status. Green means it's working. Orange means it's working but has some imperfections and red, as you might have already guessed, means it's not working. Next, let's take a look at a few more settings. Select General Settings and go to Input Assignments. I suggest looking over your user interface options, especially if you prefer using a controller to navigate MAME. After that, we'll take a look over some advanced options. I do suggest that you take advantage of the system settings in this case. This allows you to set game specific options. I'm going to turn on adjust speed to match refresh rate and the low latency option. MAME also has a rewind feature that you may be interested in. Those are all the settings that I wanted to go over. Select return to previous menu and be sure to save settings if you made any changes. I think it is time to finally start up a game. For this example, I'm going to go with time crisis. Before you start playing, you may want to do some additional game-specific settings. The default key to bring up the Options menu is the Tab key. Choose the input assignments for this system. If you're using a controller, I definitely recommend setting the Coin button. You may also want to change other buttons as well. If you've never used an arcade emulator before, coins are required in order to start a game. And that's pretty much it. When you're ready to call it quits, press the Escape key and this will bring you back to the main screen. I'll be adding some additional links in the comment section below, including how to set up CHD ROMs. MAME is by far one of my personal favorite emulators, and I made this video with the hopes that it will become one of your favorites too. If you found the information in this video to be useful, please remember to give it a like and maybe consider subscribing, as I will continue to have more setup videos like this in the future. For now, this is the core, your entertainment techie, signing out.